it there everyone uh, so I'm gonna start now I'm, I'm gonna close the actually I'm gonna close the um, thing I've got on here because uh, that's making a noise so I hope they're just leaving the chat um, okay hi so um, yeah I thought I'd go over a game from last night um, quite an interesting game and um, let's flip the board so I was black uh, last night it was a Hearts League game and uh, we were playing against one of the strongest teams in the Hearts League and uh, we didn't do that well I don't want to spoil the game as well but I actually didn't put this game on YouTube yet which is quite unusual for me because usually the day after I can um, but anyway I was reflecting on the game and other stuff and uh, okay, I thought I'd just use it to sort of for this broadcast and I've got two other master games to go um, over after uh, on more cheerful matters for the game so I don't want to spoil the result of the game but you probably get the idea of the result of the game by now um, but let's let's have a look at it so Steve Swanson he's he's about 2270 he's higher fee day than me he's higher ECF about 203 I'm about, I'm about 194 so he was playing white I did draw of him earlier in the season um, Uh, okay so I drew of Steve Swanson early in the season and so let's have a look at this system um, he was playing um, against me so e4 and I, I played the French defense and this is an away match so we go all the way there and guess what move uh, Steve plays here again against me I think this must be the third time he's played this against me and I was lucky to draw with him in the other two actually so over the last like two three years I played him quite a few times in the Hearts League because uh, he's usually a board two player uh, to, to their international master they've got an international master Simon Knott and um, he usually plays board two and then they got Byway they got Hanrick they, they, they've won the league quite a few times we were lucky to win the league last year first time in about 70 years that Barnet Elizabethans won the Hearts League so this is in sort of um, uh, you know quite a good good league club league but they do have adjournments and adjudications that move 35 and whenever we play Hartford they always want to play adjournments so move 35 if you've got a lost position you might as well resign uh, so that's that's the circumstances of this game it's the way match so he plays here d3 now I wonder what you guys uh, rate d3 here against the French defense um, this seems like a basic question but do you think d3 is a major move against the French defense yes or no is it a major major option against the French defense to play 2d3 anyone King's engine attack uh, the thing is okay uh, I'm gonna make an argument why it's a much more powerful option against the French defense than the Sicilian defense um, you see you've weakened uh, these dark squares see they're a bit weakened with this e6 see now if we had played the Sicilian defense right what you could do is knight c6 here here then maybe d6 right so you control d4 okay here right this wouldn't work out well you're weakening even more squares yes you've weakened even more dark squares in fact if you look this up on chess games com d3 is actually the second most powerful uh, recommended move against the French defense it makes the Fianchetto uh, less attractive you've already weakened uh, some dark squares so playing for g6 later is not as effective uh, that's the first thing d3 does seem to be a major tool of choice um, you know Fisher used to use the King's engine attack a lot um, you know in his youth before like the mainline um, theory but against the French defense d3 I would argue is more powerful is that something you were all aware of is that common knowledge 
that d3 is more powerful against the French defense is that a surprise to anyone here uh, to hear that Is that a surprise to anyone? That D3 is more powerful against the French defence than the Sicilian. Uh, probably for those reasons. That's the only reason I can think of. If you look at chessgames.com, check out the stats. D3, number two choice against the French defence. It's nowhere to be found, well, not that high against the Sicilian. This is the only reason I can think of. That if blacks committed uh, dark squares, then G6 is less attractive. So anyway, let's move on from that. I don't, I don't want to sort of dwell too much on that. So d5, knight d2. And um, often, um, in my previous two draws, I was a bit wiser, actually. I feel, I feel, I feel a bit dumb after last night, what I played. Um, because really, what you want here, there's a really great idea for black in this position. Okay, which Michael Adams showed me basically many years ago. I'm about the same age as Michael Adams. And we were playing friendly games. And I played this against him. And as black, um, he did something like this. Uh, this was just in a friendly game. Something like um, knight c6, g3. He just took and then plays e5. Once the bishop's committed there, you've, you're liberating uh, both bishops. Uh, you've got nice control of d4. And uh, maybe, you know, b6 later, a5. And this is a nice position. And uh, we were sort of playing cat and mouse, uh, me and Steve Swanson, in the previous game, where he didn't want to commit the bishop uh, to Fincetto if this was indeed a threat of taking and then playing e5. Because almost black can equalize. Uh, if this bishop's locked out and there's no potential for e5, you've got a very nice position um, as black potentially so anyway in this game I was less wise I think I played knight f6 and um, after knight gf3 I played c5 and I let him get on now basically after g3 um, you see c5 um, commits you know this plan would have been better with the, the bishop on c5 so I've committed now to classic King's Engine attack territory by playing c5 here. Do you, do you guys see that? That the plan, if I wanted to play the plan of d takes e4 and then knight c6 and e5, this is ruined now by c5. And to be honest, I think this was the influence of engine analysis on one of my previous games where the engine likes c5. You know, maybe it's a logical move c5. But uh, you're potentially giving white the sort of game that white wants. So he's getting classic King's Engine attack territory. Okay. So uh, g3, knight c6, bishop g2. And I played b6 with a nifty idea, I thought, of, of trying to castle queenside uh, and then like slaughtering his king, you know? Uh, you know, slaughter. Okay. Uh, so that was the ambitious plan, all right? Um, that's the basic plan for me. And it's it's got some pitfalls, really. Uh, General T, you, you think c5 is the best move? Played on move three. Hmm. What, one moment. One, one moment, sorry. C C5 blocks in the bishop, but anyway, let, let's move on from there. Let's let's take this position, King's Engine attack territory. Uh, so White castles, and I play Bishop B7. And I'm sort of optimistic that I like this position. I I thought, well, if the Queen C7 does offer the White uh, the opportunity to play this, and maybe you know White's got a big advantage here because this Knight's pretty good. Uh, there's nice control of E5. Um, in this position so this can't be that bad for white uh, you know he might continue a4 and have uh, you know a very nice position that's the first uh, pitfall but uh, maybe fortunately for me or unfortunately he played c3 so I castled okay and now he plays e5 
and I thought, okay, this is the sort of position I usually sort of, uh, you know, like, usually. Um, let's try and, actually, I'm just going to just quickly see if I can rearrange something. Hold, hold no, I, I doubt it. No, let's not bother with that, sorry. Um, so I'm provoking, I don't mind this wedge usually. Let's, let's get on to the aim. So E5, Knight FD7 d4 so he might have um knight g5 as a threat so h6 which might imply you know g5 at some point actually let me just see if i can sort out this chat hold on a sec Um, is the board still okay? Sorry, just just one. Minute. Just just addressing a technical issue. Um, okay, um, so I can leave the chat here for, for anyone watching on Twitch. I just, it was just a slight technical issue. Pardon me. So he plays uh, a three. So he might have uh, b4 on the cards, right? He called a for a bit of a pointless move later after the game. And really, I think a good move might be c4. Because uh, you can imagine if c4 take, you know, I can take on Poisson, I can try and get, c, you know, c4 control, you know, later. I can try and get c, c4 control uh, strategically. That, that would be a good square, wouldn't it? So c4 would, would kind of be good against any potential b4 here. That's something to, to bear in mind. Okay. Yeah, let's go with this position though, but Ben Gambiter. Okay. Um I, I might go back uh, later. Um sorry. So g g5 for a moment. Okay. Um but let let's note something about this pawn structure. So with this pawn structure what white's actual uh, territory with the pawn chain uh, white should actually be uh, dominant on this side of the board because you know look at this this pawn chain um and do you think it's safe for black uh, to carry out operations with the pieces here uh, to try and you know go for it here um intuitively uh, do you think that white sort of should in principle be able to take control of uh, the king's side here. Uh, is, is, is White's, I'm going to ask this question, is, is White's strength the king's side? Um, would you say, c can black really attack with g5? Um, if, if, if you want to sort of give that a moment, uh, you know, 30 seconds, a minute, or, four, no, or, or 20 seconds, would you say, would you go for an attack on the king side with black, with g5, if I asked that question, um, or not? Is it too risky? Uh, if I give you like 20 seconds to sort of try and say yes or no, is it too risky for black to play g5? Okay, um, no, someone says too risky. Okay, um, well, I, I did play g5. Okay, I did play g5. And, you know, I might have the threat of g4 even to dislodge the knight and then maybe bishop e7, you know, to attack the knight. Okay. He plays knight f1, 
So I've got this option of G4, which we did look at a bit. I think we considered uh, G4, uh, Knight H4, and he'll be attacking this pawn, you see. So if I play Bishop E7, he's got Queen takes G4. So here it would seem, where's the attack? Has Black got enough attack here, would you say? Or is Black blown to blitz? Is Black completely lost here? I want to answer, you, answer this question. Is Black completely lost here? As example. 20 seconds. Would you say Black's completely lost here? There's no attacking pieces, is there? Is there? There's only a G-file. And he's got a rock-solid fortress. I don't want to bias... Uh, what you say here right but in this position is it really dodgy for black is black theoretically lost so some of you are optimistic saying oh black has the g file yeah i, I would disagree i think black is totally lost here uh, because this is like an iron fortress look, look at all these pieces This might be good for blitz, though. Blitz chess. Uh, but anyway, I didn't. I, that's why I didn't really. I wasn't really keen on playing uh, g4 immediately. So I played uh, bishop e7 first. Yeah. Uh, with with the, potentially the idea of g4. Okay. And he seems to exploit the fact that I haven't played g4 by playing g4 himself white plays g4 here okay and now i'm going to spook you out okay with a ghost actually that's quite poetic isn't it there's a ghost of a threat all right this maneuver okay so you're playing someone over 200 ecf who's nearly like fide master would you consider knight g3 to h5 a serious threat in this position after the move g4 so you've got to answer honestly if i give you 20 seconds is now the question is knight g3 to h5 a serious threat so 20 seconds to answer that question So this is what you could call a ghost or a serious threat. Is it a ghost or a real threat? Nimzovich talks about providing ghosts to the opponent, and sometimes they weaken their position uh, further to parry the apparent threat. So a ghost is like an apparent threat. Um, Klebnix, you say yes, it is a serious threat. Anyone else? It looks strong. So what would be a natural... <laughs> so a lot of you are saying yes, and I wonder what your ratings are. Okay. No, I don't want to... I just want to get an idea of ratings. Klebniex, right? You're 1511. PST, you're 1528. Tristessa, you're 1666. Uh, so, do you all agree? If you think it's a serious threat, you would think H5 is a good move, would you? Do you think Black playing H5 is a good move here so so that's the second question then therefore is h5 a good move so 20 seconds to answer that then Clements you say yes right <laughs> yeah, General, General T, you say yes. Oh dear. 1554, okay, okay. Yeah, oh, it's all, all so wonderful, isn't it? You just open files, you sack a couple of pawns. Really, really. Okay. <laughs> I I think now there's, there's a slight weakness of this last move, actually. We've, we've got on the one hand this apparent threat of knight g3 to h5 but on the other hand you know g4 weakens f4 yeah 
and the reason we can't exploit f4 you know say we wanted to exploit f4 imagine this file was rem this was removed this will be a good outpost square for a piece f4 wouldn't it because you've got a semi-open file imagine that as a semi-open file wouldn't f4 be a good outpost square the problem is it seems in this position uh, this break f6 is impossible isn't it because of the frontal pressure on e6 as soon as you play f6 takes and you lose e6 correct so you would never dream in this position of trying to make use of f4 would you for an f6 break would anyone ever consider an f6 break because the structural weakness of the last move g4 is actually f4 okay so in terms of semi-open files if you did get rid of this f pawn you'd have f4 you'd have pressure on the f file and maybe f2 might be vulnerable so Koljak, you say knight f8 to g6 to f4 yes and also later you might play f6 or not you see actually i think you can arrange for f6 because you imagine king here bishop here knight here knight g6 rooks and then f6 if you get rid of this pawn this could be protected by bishop it's a bit of a long-term plan um so let, let's just go back so g4 you see i think uh this next move <laughs> is a completely losing move in this position right try this fret causes me what i consider now a completely losing move okay black is about to get wiped out yeah by playing h5 i played h5 casually and guess what right guess what he just takes on g5 okay so he's on f7 right he's threatening g takes because the queen's now on that what does black play here what, what's Black's best chance, do you think, of survival in this position? If I give you 20 seconds, what, what would you recommend for Black to do here? So you've just lost the pawn, okay? Suggestions for Black? I mean, do you really want this? Looks a bit risky, doesn't it? Takes, it's on h8, it's on d6. So Benko Gambita, you, you play what I thought looked okay, right? This is good, this is good for chess cube war zones, yeah? <laughs> this bishop takes g5. This is only good for war zones, right? Not for real chess. Because in real chess, I'll show you what happens. Yeah, it's quite cruel now, okay? This is very, very cruel. He takes, right? Rook dg8. And now, right? Black is totally lost. h4. There's no counterplay. Where is the counterplay? Black is totally lost. Look at these pieces, right? You know, he's got he's got squares, he's got things coming in. Th this is a fortress. This pawn with this bishop on g5. If ever f6, he gets this diagonal. Yeah, e6 is under frontal pressure. If ever f6, right? So I play h takes g4, queen takes g4. What can black do here? Well, okay, so playing the game on, on um, you, you, you say g5 is a suicide move. No, actually, right, actually, let, let's just go back, okay, before move 18. You know when he played g4, uh, this, this would have been okay, you know, rook... 
take c4, right? So against this you'll take, yeah? This is a variation. So the idea is to play f6 with this guarding e6. Black's okay. Look, f4, f2. This structure is okay. This has the advantage of marking out f4. e5 later might blast on here. Yeah, much better to play for f6. Would you agree? So actually h6 and g5 not completely lost, but this g4 provided this ghost of a threat. When he played g4, uh, you know, there's this implication of knight g3 to h5. So this was a panicky move. So we have here a position, uh, a pawn down with very little compensation. Would you all agree? There's very little compensation. Agree? No compensation? 20 seconds. You want to play f6 now? Just make things worse. You know, e6 is dropping, d5 is going to drop. No compensation, this or compensation, right. So I play king b8. So may, you know, maybe, you know, bishop c8 and f6, maybe, you know, try and protect this. Let, let's try, if knight f8, b4, knight h7, he can take, take, my king's going to get blasted here. And it's still pretty solid. It's pretty solid. So black will be worse in this kind of position. And he can start, he can come back for the attack. Yeah. And, and look at this. He's got an iron grip and this knight's protecting key squares. Yeah. It's a rock solid uh, defense. Yeah. And the king's going to get slaughtered. So let's go back. I play king b8. So he plays b4. I try and keep it closed. c4. And he just plays rook e3 now. So it's potentially, you know, piling up here. Or here, or here. It's horrible. I play knight e7. Okay, so uh, knight e7. So if bishop takes e7, rook takes bishop here, maybe takes and then takes that might be okay for black okay so knight e7 uh, so he didn't want to do this uh, because you know of this queen takes d6 so he plays knight g3 and um, okay I, tr I try and prepare uh, you know bishop c8 for, for f6 So bishop c8. Unfortunately, th this next move is really quite strong. Uh, this next move by white's a bit of a killer. I wonder if you can guess it. <laughs> so what would you play here with white? I'll give you 20 seconds. Okay. Uh, you look at all these pieces. One, two, three, four. And this kind of fortress. Yeah. This has all gone wrong. So white to play here. What would you play here with white? Um, try not to look at the move score. Okay. Yeah, um bishop e7 still might be good, but you know you know you can take it and and take here. It might be a little bit. No, this is much stronger. I think what he plays is much stronger actually. He plays queen f4. And he um you know f7. What about f7? It's, it's all falling to bits here. If I play knight g6, you know, I, I really can't afford to lose f7. Because then he's on this. So it's so knight takes, bishop takes, rook takes. That rook drops. 
So what would you do here? You can't play knight takes h4. There's nothing, is there? This pawn is now dropping. e6. Agree? This is horrible, isn't it? Would you agree? You can't allow queen takes f7. Would it, Would everyone agree? You can't play knight um, g6. So I, I try knight f5, and the position just collapses. Uh, he just takes, and now he just gets the queens off, e6. So he's on my queen. I dare not take, you know, because the bishop will come back. It's brutal. So I take here. He takes the queens off, and after rook takes e6, now d5 is dropping. Look at this d5 problem. Look at this huge bishop on this diagonal. It's it's horrendous. There's opportunities just to double the rooks. There's no no play. It's a completely destroyed position. So I don't really want to play like this in the future. <laughs> I'm not that keen to play like this in the future with h5. Now, do you agree this is looking horrendous? Or anyway, I'll just show you how the game continues. <laughs> so I play bishop e7. He doubles rooks. I can't do anything about this. B5, as though maybe you know in the maybe you know maybe rook e7. Play bishop c6. He just plays king f1. You know, just in case this bishop, you know, rook here, and I and after this, this is too much pressure. It's it's all over. I resign here. I've had enough here. Uh, you know, because if if king b b7, you know, he could just uh, bishop takes d5, for example. Uh, you know, and 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 win. You know, the rook. So, so that was a, a train wreck of a game. Let's let's have a look at it again. <laughs> so. Basically, white is a little bit stronger in principle. Um, with um, you know the, the king side uh, pawn wedge, okay. On 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 the king side, white's got a kind of um, advantage on that side of the board. Okay. A uh, torture chamber. There was no nothing about insulting the opponent. Okay. Oh. Uh, are you just here to be rude to me? Okay. There was no insult intended. This was a legitimate way of trying to play the game. Yeah. Are your comments just trying to wind me up? Okay. I, I, I'm thinking of blocking you. Okay. If you carry on like this. So after d4. You know, h6 and g5 look actually like quite natural uh, moves, actually, right, to gain space. There's no insult about it. Okay, so a3, g5, it's up to you to prove this is so bad. What's your rating and you think this is an insult? Because often, you know, g, g4 is, is trying to put pressure on d4 indirectly. There's a positional basis sometimes, but things did did go badly uh, wrong after knight f1, bishop e7. As I say, g4. There's there's a better plan available of trying to protect e6 and trying to play for f6. So if I can remove all these arrows for a sec. Well, you know, the well, just say your rating. Fine. If you think this is so rubbish, uh, this plan, please just say your rating, okay? For for me, this this looks like an aggressive plan at the time of of last night uh, with G five. Uh, now G four, okay. Looks like a solid move, but it carries uh, some weakness potentially. That if I can arrange, uh, you know, for f6, this might have been okay. But um, you know, h5 is just a losing move. 
So you, can can we sit? Can we? Is this sort of demonstrating H five can be a disastrous move? I, I don't know this this game here is is a total disaster after H five. Uh, is this quite vivid? Uh, this disaster. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess I'm upset about the game. It looked quite easy, uh, but you know, H5, you know, wasn't wasn't essential. I'm actually upset about the game, to be honest. It was only played last night. It's 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 a disappointing. Uh, I didn't give much of a fight, but H5 is is not the right move here. Clearly, I mean, it looks tempting, but you know, white definitely has this pawn wedge. If black's ever going to play f6, this this pawn needs to be protected with like bishop c, c8 and f6. So potentially, this is a weakness. Potentially, the f file is more useful uh, for for black than trying for h5. Benko Gamta, I think it's still a good idea. You just need a patient build up, I think. Probably. Yeah. But as as I say, knight, you know, knight g3 to h5 seems to be the clear positional implication when he played uh, g4. Um, so that's why, you know, is h5 like tempting to stop the knight g3 to h5 threat? Knight f8 to g6, rook f8, knight d8, f6. Yes, you're right, Benko Gemeter. There's, there's a way of preparing it. Um, Naughty Bishop, you say black has three or four pieces not playing. You're right. But on the other hand, a3 might not be brilliant if c4. Because if, you know, you can take and you can try and get the c4 square. So white's attack on the queen side might give black a little bit extra time if black did play the move uh, c4 here. I think this would be the best move to play c4. Uh, would you all agree with that? Because you can slow down white's attack with, with the en passant. Agree? So c4 here is probably the right plan and slowly prepare f6. What do you think about that? c4? So this, this is an engine uh, variation. Okay, so knight g3, king b8. This is just engine uh, line. Bishop c8 is, is preparing to cover e6. Rook dg8 is not needed strictly, actually. Uh, so it's just going back here. But preparing for f6, this should have been, you know, this looks like an okay position uh, for black here. Uh, would you agree this position is okay for black I'll just I'll just pose that as a question if you look to this position for 20 seconds this this would be okay would you say because I think black's got rook coordination anyway the two rooks are working well white's rooks are not so coordinated there's an attacking target f2 here Okay, so I think I think you know if this can be answered with on percent, then it should be okay. So it just went disastrously wrong uh, with just this idea that this this move uh, carried a threat. So h five is is just you know this potential for using this pawn to come here later is is very dangerous. Um. Okay, so knight takes g5. Bishop takes. Bishop takes. Do I have any advice for playing stronger players? <laughs> Just try and get a draw. Don't go for them. I think the general advice from this game is let them come to you. That was the advice given to me. When people go for the attack, sometimes they leave weaknesses behind. And that's the same. If you go to attack a stronger player you're creating weaknesses with the attack sometimes i think i heard a gm say that 
uh, a British GM, a couple of years ago at Gibraltar. He said some, he loves it when people go for him. I didn't really quite understand it then. But I think there is this idea that if you attack with pawns especially, you're leaving weaknesses behind. And so you sort of get Petrosians. I think Petrosian uh, was that kind of style of play, negative chess, where you provoke the opponent to basically generate as many weaknesses as possible before you go for them. And one way of doing that is getting uh, the opponent to attack you. Uh, he's he's 203 or something, 204. He's very good. Um, Steve Swanson. Black's rating. It's me. I'm black. I'm playing black. This is my game from last night. I'm 194 or something. So have, have you heard that, you know, idea that, you know, sometimes you want the opponent to attack you uh, to create weaknesses? And this is really what happened in this game. I tried to go for an attack. I clearly created weaknesses. And the whole the whole thing is just getting taken over by White. The whole section of the board is, is getting taken over. Uh, you know, Petrosian style. Um, so the, and also, this, this is, you know, there's, there's no pressure on the center now. So White's kind of got the free hand on the king side as well. Uh, so we'll, we'll go on to a different game after this, one which I'm not so emotionally uh, uh, strung up about, because <laughs> let's, let's go on to a different game. So, swiftly moving along from this disaster game last night, let's look at some other games. Alright. Alright. So this is another uh, game from uh, Bunrati Masters. Alright. Well, I, I drew of Steve Swanson earlier in the season, actually, a quick draw, and I drew of him a couple of years back again. Um, I nearly, I had a good position once against him, but then we had the Germans. <laughs> I've never actually beaten him in this league. But anyway, let's move on. Okay. So uh, this was Simon Williams against Michael Adams from the Bum Rassy Masters. So there were a couple of Adams games I don't think we went over. Actually, funny enough, I think we might have got over this game. <laughs> Um, shall we go over it again anyway? So Simon Williams is, is a British Grandmaster as well. Uh, so let's just go over this. Should we go over this game again? Or, or not? Um, I think we might have done this. Okay, let's, well, we might have done this briefly. So let's, let's go over this. Um, so d4 knight f6, c4 e6, so Nimzo Indian, it looks like, but now actually pounces with d5. So he avoids the queen's Indian territory. So black's very solid here. After knight c3, bishop e7, and um, white plays uh, bishop f4. Okay, so he's got something planned like casting queenside. It castles a3, b6, queen c2. So he's, he's definitely not moving these pieces out. So this king looks headed uh, for the queen side. Now Adams here plays c5, so he's putting immediate pressure on the center. There's a lot of central tension. e3. Bishop b7. So it looks like a pleasant enough position, actually. Uh, black. Okay, has here. White now pl uh, plays d takes c5. B takes, and now castles. So there's pressure, it seems, on d5 here. There's a lot of pressure on d5. Evans plays knight bd7. Now h4, <laughs> so knight g5 maybe, you know, or, or whatever. The queen's, queen's on h7 here. There's pressure on d5. Does it look kind of promising to you, this position? Uh, 
is it promising for, for white here if I give you 20 seconds just to evaluate this do you think white looks good here or is it dangerous Well, anyway, okay, so black, um, Michael Adams, he plays queen b6, actually. Queen b6. Uh, so, which might carry, uh, in the future, the threat of d4, actually. Because queen b6 has also got pressure on b2. Okay. Now, actually, knight g5 <laughs> is playing. You see this? Do you see this pressure, right? As though, as though this knight is going to be driven away. You know, knight takes d5, uh, knight takes d5. There'll be queen, queen takes h7, mate. Yeah. De Pillar writes, uh, I play this type of position, and why this is not time to play castle in queenside. <laughs> okay, so black calmly uh, plays in this position d4 okay so d4 right white takes on d4 and that plays knight a4 because surely you know this pawn looks uh, vulnerable if this queen uh, moves when does the queen move and doesn't the pawn drop well, actually, the queen just moves here now. And there's a nifty uh, tactic here, unfortunately, um, that if rook takes d4, there'll be e5. But in fact, in fact, uh, you know, the queen is also now on a4. The queen's protecting a4 and attacking h7. But this pawn is annoying. And it is actually taken here anyway. Uh, with the idea of an exchange sacrifice so e5 seemingly okay he's forking uh, these guys rook takes d7 wow exchange sack uh, so if if knight takes d7 uh, we, we'd have queen takes h7 that would be mate yeah so queen takes d7 is forced bishop takes e5 two pawns with exchange one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Two pawns for the exchange. Is this position quite promising for white? Do you think? Promising for white? If I give you 20 seconds uh, to think about it. 20 seconds. Is it promising for white? Actually, white is threatening. Bishop takes f6 now and queen h7 again. It's funny in this position actually Adams plays a strange looking move he plays rook fd8 and I you know okay he's got pressure here but you might ask well you know isn't uh, Bishop isn't Bishop takes f6 on Bishop takes, check, king here, is this too dangerous, um, it looks a bit dangerous um, here because like this check is leading nowhere is it, yeah, and if, if say bishop e2 then you get mated don't you, check, you end up getting no, 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 there's light there. Hang on. Bishop e2. Maybe, maybe just check and, and just taking. What would white have here? Probably not much. Yeah? 
Okay, so maybe uh, that's why Rook FD8 looks pretty good. Would you all agree? So actually, um, Bishop E2 was played. Uh, so not, you know, taking. Um, okay, Bishop E2. Now G6. Okay. So that blunts the diagonal. Now this was taken anyway because uh, now a uh, knight c5 is possible because uh, that bishop was was on c5. So knight c5, queen c7. Knight g e4. Adam simply takes on e4. And parks his bishop here, and look at this quite solid now. <laughs> this is quite solid for the black king, isn't it? Okay, he's two pawns for the exchange, but uh, it's it's also pointing at b2, isn't it? This position. Uh, also, there's a threat of check. Looks good. So g3 stops uh, queen f4 check. Rook a b8. So this has to be parried. Knight c3. Now after queen c5, curiously, white has two pawns for the exchange, doesn't he? But actually, white resigned here. Um, can you believe it? White resigned here. Adams is black. Uh, Grandmaster Adams is black. Michael Adams, he's 2724. Simon Williams is a 2500 GM. But White resigned here. I think there was some discussion. Was it premature? Let's say Rook F1. How do we um, play uh, black? Any suggestions? What what would um, what would black play here? Any ideas? Interesting. Um, actually, check looks good, doesn't it? If king here, there's queen takes. If f four. Let's check here. If that moves, then there's rook d2. Ouch. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Poor. So, yeah, um, white resigns. That was horrible. So, I don't know, interesting game. It's sort of a hack attack gone wrong again, wasn't it? Like, like my game, sort of. Um, white attempted a sort of attacking uh, game. Uh, let's, let's quickly review that game then. Um, so it looks really an aggressive plan uh, from white in this game actually and quite creative but um just didn't seem to work out very well uh so d4 sort of pawn sack was quite interesting leading to an exchange sack from white for two pawns but it seems black after rook fd8 didn't mind uh, bishop takes and bishop queen here because the, these guys are all pretty weak, so pretty tactical. Then we have uh, g6, and this just looks bad now. This position after queen c5, um, that that was um, it's not it's not pleasant here. So let's look at another game um, now from Adams which I'm pretty sure we haven't checked out at all uh, last time um, so an international master I believe 2373 Simon Ansel so playing white Ansel plays e4 we have a Sicilian defense for Michael Adams actually he usually plays e5 so this is quite interesting Knight f3 96 bishop b5 Rosalimo kind of system against Anish Vezhnikov. Uh so g6 
which I think is one of the best moves here against bishop b5. Because uh, if, if bishop takes, I think black just takes here and then has good control over d4. Castles, bishop g7. c3. Adams plays knight f6. Not minding e5. I think he just played knight d5. d4. Okay. So, um, c takes d4. c takes. Knight takes c4. It was a pawn sack by white. So he's got some devious idea. What is he doing here with this pawn sack? After bishop a4. If this knight moves, um, does white have pressure? The knight didn't move actually um, immediately. First black attacked the bishop. Uh, bishop b3, now knight a5. So it looks as though this is a nice square for black here. Rook e1 and black castles. So after knight c3, b4. And I'm not sure what does white have for the pawn? White's a pawn down here. Is this a convincing gambit? I'll, I'll pose that question now. Is this a convincing gambit? I mean, you might think e7 is a bit vulnerable. You know, maybe bishop g5 and you're on e7. Also, is is c5? Is this for all theory? This is all theory, is it? The the pillar says uh, this is theory. Really? The pillar. Do, are you? What's your rating? Can I ask? So do you, do you know a lot of voting theory? Or you? White is worse, black is better. Okay, intuitively though, it looks as though I don't know where the pressure is. Okay, better for black. PST writes, uh, Koljash white is worse. Uh, Tristan said, not really. Okay, so we have Bishop B seven. So what is black's potential here? Is he going to threaten maybe to take and um, he's got pressure on d5 so he's sort of tying down the queen to d5. Bishop g5 anyway putting immediate pressure on e7. Rook e8, rook c1 and there's also pressure on you know knight c5 to be useful. That's contested rook c8. White takes Knight takes c8, so he keeps the pressure on d5. Knight c5. Queen c7. White grabs the light square bishop. Now queen d2. So this pawn looks like an interesting wedge, and there's also bishop h6. Now Adams, he takes on b3, and he simply plays d6. Uh, so d6 protects e7, so now he's maybe free to attack d5 here. Rook a1. Okay, the a file. Queen b5. After h4, h5, the rook goes back. So does white have conversation? a5. Okay, so rook e4 now, as though maybe rook c4 might be useful. Maybe. Also, of course, a4 is prevented. Knight b6. Ruling out any rook c4, maybe, and also maybe a4 is on the cards now. Um, he's offering e7, but d5 will drop. 
okay in fact this happens now that white uh, takes on e7 so we have an exchange of rooks but instead of the immediate queen takes d5 what you know black doesn't want to lose d6 all he does here is queen c5 protecting d6 and he's going to take with the knight d5 is dropping there's only that queen to protect d5 here So it seems white's getting a little bit outplayed. He plays queen f4, putting again pressure on, on here. But now knight takes d5 anyway, giving back the pawn. But is black going to be better now? Check. He takes on e7. And he wins a pawn back. He's still a pawn up now. So he's got a two to one pawn majority. This is B freeze weak. Check. Queen D five. As though maybe you know knight G five or knight E five. Maybe maybe a threat. He's protecting B three as well. But of course F two is is vulnerable and that's taken here. And now after taking uh you know that queen was on here bishop d6 is now possible and this is mating white actually uh the game finished king h3 queen g3 mate but uh it's mating anyway you know it's just it's all over uh you know check somewhere i say it's all over but there's knight g1 hang on what is the incisive move here probably just bishop What would be the incisive move here? Check you got knight here. I mean queen f2 threatens um no sorry, pardon me. In in this position, yeah, check queen f maybe there's queen g3 as well, actually. So anyway, king, king h1, any suggestions after king h1? Okay, let's have a quick look at this. Uh, how does black win this position? Uh, what's, what's the best move here for black? Oh, sorry, sorry. You're, you're, you guys are saying, check. You're saying queen f4. Then knight f3. Oh, now you've got check here. Hang on. Bishop c5. Yeah, I think that would be... That would be the end of game, wouldn't it? So that queen f4 is pretty nifty to go here. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know what this 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 game is a bit complex actually. Should, I don't know. Should we overview and summary it? It's a complex game. Uh, so some sort of uh, theoretical pawn sacrifice. Um. Where. At some point, the pawn was returned for an advantage. So it's a bit tricky to play. This e7 always being an issue. He's prepared to offer d5 in return for e7. So he goes, he gives up e7, and he plays this subtle queen c5, prompting queen f4. So he gives back the pawn temporarily. He's a pawn up again. And this time now, on this transaction, White's king safety is, just goes. This is lost. Okay. Um, <clears throat> right. Um, so I hope you got something from this week. Um, all right. Um, any questions? Otherwise, uh, I'll see you again probably uh, Tuesday um, next week at the usual slot. So, uh, thanks very much. Uh, next Tuesday, uh, usual slot. Okay. Um, okay, I'm, I think I'm going to turn off the uh, the stream now. And i um, sorry for being a bit too emotional about my game from last night. I wouldn't normally go over a game I've just played the previous night. I think emotions shouldn't have done that i think i'll keep try and keep the games 
to do with master games not my own games <laughs> so anyway all right thanks very much and uh, see you next week on tuesday thanks very much <laughs>